Hello everyone, welcome to my vlog, Gingerella. Welcome back to any previous subscribers and hello to any new subscribers. So this vlog is going to be about my January makes. So let's get stuck in. And actually you'll notice I've got myself a little like list of things to talk about just so that I don't waffle on. So first of all, Happy New Year. I haven't recorded a vlog in 2017 yet, so this is my first vlog. So what's been happening for me not a lot really, I've been a little bit under the weather and I actually still am so um, I might be taking regular sips of my drink so, so that I don't start having a coughing fit so I'm going to do as little coughing in this vlog as I can. Sorry I've been away, I've just not really been around because I've been really busy and the evenings are dark and the weekends were cold and wet and just haven't really felt in the mood for vlogging and have been using my spare time to sew really. I've missed you guys so looking forward to putting this out there and, and having your comments and questions and, and everything because it's great, I love it. In terms of sewing, I've been sewing up a little bit of a storm so that's good and also 2017 Make 9 which loads of people have got involved in. I, I shared mine on Instagram and on the blog so if you want more detail go there and it's it's going pretty well so far. I've made two and a half of my nine things, so that's good. And also mixed in with other makes that aren't on that list, which was always the plan, that that was a good foundation of things I knew I wanted to make and then to supplement with other makes, so. But if people want me to do a vlog on my Make 9, then let me know down in the comments and I'm really happy to do a vlog on that and talk a little bit more about the patterns that I've chosen and the fabric that I'm looking for and actually you might be able to help me because some of them I'm really struggling for for fabric choices um, so that would be really helpful actually. So the first thing that I made in January this year actually was a massive sewing fail for me. It was a Tilly and the Buttons Bettine dress so I didn't get the pattern out for that one just because I think most people know it and also, I'm not going to talk about it in very much detail, just because it didn't work and I'm not going to show it to you. And actually what's left of it is hanging on Virginia actually, and you probably can't see from there, but this is the bodice and it's really hacked off at the bottom, just because I literally hacked my skirt off because I really didn't like it. It's just not the right shape for me. Also it was going to be a wearable toile and I made it in this polyester crepe and that was probably not the right fabric choice for it either. But I, I just don't think that kind of tulip shape works for me. I don't have the world's smallest hips. Sure, I don't have the world's biggest hips, but it just wasn't very flattering. The reason that I've kept the bodice is that I quite want to make just a little um, crop top. Maybe not out of this fabric, but use it to make it out of a different fabric. So that's the reason why it's on there at the moment to remind me that I need to do something with that and try and salvage some sort of positive out of that sewing fail. So the first of my January makes that I'm going to show you is a Colette Mabel skirt. So hopefully you can see that. I know you probably can't see my face but that's fine. This is version 1 and I made a few adjustments. The first was to lengthen it by 5 inches actually. and. This was because I was looking for a jersey pencil skirt rather than a jersey mini skirt. So that was the first thing that I did. And I also, so the back piece is not cut on the fold, whereas the front is. And I decided to cut the back piece on the fold as well and just eliminate the, the seam allowance and the back seam that's in there. It has a little waistband here, um, which I just faced in some normal black ponty from Fabricland in Bristol and the outside is in some sort of um, textured Ponte Roma fabric that I actually got in the US when I was visiting Michigan and I got that from Joanne's Fabrics and I've made um, a seamwork meza dress in it as well and it's really really nice, I love to wear it, it's so soft and it responds really well to being sewn so that's great and I also don't really have to do very much in terms of pattern matching because it always just kind of works out. It's jazzy enough that I don't really have to do very much. I made it in a size small. I had to bring 
the, the side seams in a little bit just because there was a bit of gaping um, and it was probably the equivalent of just bringing it in another seam allowance at the top. I wrote a blog post on it so there's a bit more detail on the blog if you want to read more about it but yeah that's one of my first make nine makes. It's really comfortable, it goes really well with this top that I'm not telling you about right now. If I was going to make it again I think I probably could do with lengthening it just a little bit more but all of that is going to depend on the fabric that I would make it in so I'd cut it out the same I think and then just adjust as necessary. Okay so the second January make that I want to share with you is a Grain Line Studio Hemlock tee. The fabric is some sweatshirting from Fabrics Galore in London which actually is a result of a voucher for Christmas from my brother. I haven't written a blog post on this yet but it should be coming soon and there'll be a link to it in the description box when I do. In terms of sizing, the Hemlock tee is just one size and it's it's quite big and oversized. You, m you won't be able to see that possibly from there but the, there's edge of the the shoulder seam actually comes down this far but if I'd cut it and sewn it at the original size it would have been down here. The sleeves I didn't really change apart from I brought them in a little bit around the wrist which um, I'm hiking up anyway and perhaps I probably shouldn't have tightened it quite so much because this fabric really doesn't have any give. In terms of the body size I cut it pretty much the full size and then it was out here so it wasn't quite the look I was going for so I brought it in so that it's just a bit more close to my body shall we say but not fitted. I did cut out a neckband but because there isn't any stretch in the fabric trying to stretch the neckband around the, the neckline actually would have been pretty difficult and I wasn't really sure what to do but this top originally was inspired by something I'd seen on Pinterest and I'll, I'll put a picture in now um, and although that did have a neckline, the hem was unfinished and it was just left like this. So I knew I was wanting to leave the hem like this and I thought, well, hey, why not leave the neckline the same? And I thought, well, if I change my mind, I can always go back and do something with it. But actually, it's fine as it is and I really like this sort of hint of white around the hem that you get because it's unfinished. If you look really closely, you can see really small snips in the centre of both the neckline and the hem, um, where I mark the centre points, which I always do, even if the pattern doesn't include it. So, I don't know, if a dressmaker saw it, they might, they might be completely <laughs> disgusted that, you know, you can see snips and things like that, but I actually quite like it because it's a really raw version of my make so that's really nice. I just overlocked all the seams. It's super warm and I really like it. I've actually only worn it once since I made it a couple of weeks ago. I think probably I don't wear my makes if I haven't blogged them because they just remind me that I haven't blogged them and there's a bit of a guilt element there. So what do you reckon? Do you think it's all right? Okay last but by no means least the final two makes that I made in January and actually one of them I've got on and the other one I'm just gonna wave in the air. Um, and the main reason for that is because I wrote a blog post for the both of them but I also wanted to show you this one where it's long and, and worn with jeans and, and something different to in the blog post. So this is the Grain Line Studio Lark Tee and this is the Seamwork Margot skirt but I actually made the circle skirt variation. So let's first of all talk about the Grain Line Studio Lark Tee. So this is some cotton jersey from Fabrics Galore, which was also uh, I paid for with the voucher that my brother and his girlfriend gave me for Christmas. And it's a really lovely fabric. It's so soft. It's washed really well and the re recovery is really good. In terms of sizing, I made a size 4. I made the boat neck variation having previously made the scoop neck variation and I made it with long sleeves. I made some adjustments in that for the neckline I took it up the equivalent of, of an extra two or so inches um, by just cutting the neckline of a different size and I think it was the size 12 possibly um, but yeah I just took it up to the point where I thought it might create an even higher boat neck. I'd sewn it up and then I tried it on and actually it was really quite loose everywhere. It just looks a little bit too big rather than comfortably loose. So I brought everything in 
around this area. I just brought it in from under the arm and down the waist but also kept it the same at the hip size because actually the hip size was spot on. I'd broken my twin needle so the hem and the wrists and the neckline are zigzag stitched which actually is quite a nice different feature when I'm always twin needling everything. I didn't add anything to the length um, and it's actually quite long but I quite like it like that. I quite like a long top. Really happy with this one. Definitely going to make her again and try and adjust the pattern so that it isn't as loose but again there'll be some adjustment that's needed depending on which fabric that's used um, and I might also just lengthen the sleeve. I should say that this is a shortened version of the sleeve so by lengthening it I just mean put it back to the original length basically. So let's talk a little bit about the seamwork margot which I'm not going to put on but I'm just going to sort of wave around. So with this one I also made a size 4 which might be classed as, as a size small on seamwork patterns. I just made it in some standard black ponte from Fabricland which is nice, it's bobbled a little bit with wearing and washing but it's black so you really can't, can't tell. I did something really daft which was I wanted the skirt a little bit longer so what I decided to do was just extend it out to a bigger size at the hem. That does not work on a circle skirt. You need to have that extra length all over. But it turned out that when I'd sewn it up, it was a little bit too long anyway. So that wasn't necessary, I chopped some off anyway. When I'd made it all up, everything was really, really big. And I took it in quite a lot, probably past the smallest size even. In terms of the waistband, I didn't do it the way the pattern calls for you to do it. It's two pieces that you sew together and so you actually end up with a waistband that's double the thickness of this. The thickness of, of this waistband really is only that big now because what I'd done was I'd only cut out one pair and I was far too lazy to go back and cut out another pair so I just decided to fold it over. It was a little bit tight when I'd sewn it because I'd adjusted it and then also stitched it down and whatnot but it's, it's give a lot more now. I do have to put it on over my head, there's no way I'm getting it over my hips to get it onto my waist, but that's fine, I can get it, I can just about get it over my bust, so that's fine. And yeah, I really like it, it's actually really comfortable, I can throw it on with pretty much any top that I've got and really not think about it. So I should be making more of this one, I think, but I just need to work out exactly what adjustments I made to be able to make it to the pattern, and I would like to make it with a proper waistband, the waistband that's in the pattern, but I think the waistband also looks quite nice, so yeah, quite happy with that. So that's the last of my January makes, so I hope you enjoyed having a little peek at them. There are a few other things that I started in January that rolled over into February, so you'll get to hear more about that in my February sewing plans vlog, which is actually going to be recorded immediately after this one, so you'll notice I'm going to be wearing the same thing. That's what's next, and I've got lots to tell you about in my February vlog, um, both in terms of plans but also things that are upcoming over the next few months and, and during 2017. So thank you so much for watching. There's links to everything that I've talked about in the description box. If you've got any questions or comments please fire away in the, the comments below. I really love talking to you all. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!